Uh, hello, everyone. And if you hear construction, my apologies. That was not expected. I will just make the introduction for today's live event with Adventus Mining. I will introduce the President and CEO, Christian Cargo Samard, the General Manager at El Domo, Scott Miller, and the Country Manager of Ecuador, Alvaro Duenas. Today will be a roundtable discussion on the recent political developments in Ecuador and the potential impact on Adventist mining. So I encourage you to submit your questions on the right hand side of your screen in the Q&A chat, and they can be addressed during the presentation or discussion. As always, this summit will be recorded and will be available on six.com to watch afterwards. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to you, Christian, to kick things off. Thank you, Kyle. Good to be back on. Uh, we were on about a month ago, uh, Scott and I giving a fulsome uh, update on Adventus. Uh, but a lot has happened in, in Ecuador over the last month, both directly and indirectly uh, related to our projects. Uh, and so we thought we'd do a, a call with uh, Scott Mueller, our GM and head of construction at the Curipamba Eldomo project and all of our country manager to uh, just clarify our views on uh, what's transpired over the last month. A lot of forward looking statements that we're going to make uh, today, but uh, the expectation is that we have a 20 to 25 minute overview and then we'll take all of your questions uh, thereafter. So uh, again, why are we here? So our last webinar was July 26th. Uh, since then, uh, in early August, we had a press release where uh, we reported that the Constitutional Court had a writ affecting the socialization process for our ESIA and that potentially has an impact on our timeline. So we're gonna talk about the background to the writ, uh, what the government is doing to respond to the constitutional court and the potential impact to the timeline uh, to construction of our project. We had an unfortunate uh, event in Ecuador in August ahead of the presidential elections, which occurred on Sunday, where one of the candidates was assassinated We'll talk a little bit about that and the security situation in Ecuador. We'll talk about the outcomes from the presidential election on uh, that just occurred on Sunday, as well as the assembly uh, election and the impact of the referendum uh, that, that had uh, a question regarding one of the oil fields and some concessions uh, north of Quito. So those are the main topics today. Uh, I'm going to pass it on to Alvaro to discuss the election results from Sunday. Thank you, Christian. Good morning, everyone. Uh, yes, well, we went through, Ecuador went through a uh, election process last Sunday. It was an interesting uh, result, uh, as expected. The Correa's party uh, won the election or, or passed to the second round of, of the election with a 33% of, of the votes. And uh, there was a surprise that uh, Daniel Novoa, uh, that is a very uh, young politician, um, he was in the second uh, place with 24%. And I said it was a surprise because nobody uh, was expected that Daniel Dugoa will uh, get to the second place. He was in, in the polls, he was like sixth or seventh in the seventh place. But after that debate that uh, uh, historically in, in Ecuador has not an impact in the elections, this time has or had a, a very important impact in, uh, in the outcome. So uh, he is in the second place. Uh, if we talk about the two candidates that will be on the second round, uh, Luisa Gonzalez, she's uh, a very um, close to, the, to Rafael Correa, former president of Ecuador. Um, and uh, the most important thing is that she's very loyal to the former president. So uh, she was elected inside the party and uh, uh, her vice president was the former president candidate uh, when uh, 
Lasso won last election. So uh, uh, Luisa Gonzalez, uh, she has a, a, a long story in the, in the public sector, more than 20 years working in the public sector from, uh, from uh, uh, low level jobs to, uh, to be part of the last assembly. She was part of the last assembly and, and she was a very active uh, uh, assemblyist in, in, in the last assembly. Um, as I mentioned, she, she is very loyal to Rafael Correa and, and uh, she thinks uh, like uh, Rafael Correa and, and we will talk further some highlights uh, about uh, her, uh, her point of view in the, if, if she uh, gets to the presidency. Uh, Daniel Dubois, as I also mentioned, was the surprise. Um, he had 24%. He is a very young politician. He has an impressive uh, academic uh, record. Uh, most of the most uh, uh, most of the uh, most important uh, universities, and um, uh, his his uh, uh, experience in the in the public sector was he was part of the last assembly that that uh, Lasso closed. So uh, he was like two and a half years as assemblyman. Um, he was not very active, but his most important experience is that his father was uh, five times a presidential candidate. So, so he has a, a background in, in the political field uh, uh, in Ecuador. Uh, her, uh, his uh, vice president is uh, a lady from Cuenca. She's a, a businesswoman. An entrepreneur and and uh, also very pro uh, business and and pro mining. Uh, it's important to highlight that both candidates are uh, will support mining. They they uh, have talked about during their campaigns. They talk about uh, uh, mining, uh, especially responsible mining, uh, and uh, they said that they will support companies uh, that. Um, will be th that comply with environment uh, laws and the, and the, and the communities uh, support. Um, the, the, I think I will say that the two difference between the candidates uh, uh, related to mining is that uh, Luisa Gonzalez said that uh, she will support uh, mining but uh, exportations of value added products. Not the raw, not just raw materials. So they are thinking in 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 uh, some uh, industrialization of of, uh, of the, the mining uh, product. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Daniel Doboa said that he will delegate uh, the mining uh, exploration and exploitation to the private sector, and he will support private sector and private companies, foreign and national companies to to be. Uh, in the in the um, in the mining uh, uh, exploration and exploitation. Uh, this is what is uh, going uh, right now in the, in the first round. Um, the next round will be on October fifteenth, and uh, we will see that it's interesting what is going to happen in the in the next weeks or in the next month, because there. There will be a lot of alliance. Uh, there will be a lot of conversation and negotiation between parties. It's important to to know that um, there are, in in our view, there are uh, natural alliances between some parties that they think alike, but uh, that's not always what happens uh, here in Ecuador and, and in, in other countries, of course. That um, uh, not. All the votes are endorsable, but uh, it, it is. Uh, we, we think that probably uh, Daniel Novoa uh, could take uh, some votes from other candidates, especially uh, center right uh, and center left uh, parties. Uh, he will he will take those those votes. If that if if that happens, uh, I, I think that. Uh, we think that he will probably win the, the, the next uh, presidential uh, elections, but nothing is said uh, uh, until, until now. We have to see 
what is happening on the next uh, on, on the next weeks. Um, this is uh, related to the uh, to the presidential um, elections. Also, there is an important um, thing oh, that that the the people that are not decide uh, their vote. I think that they will uh, that, that always happen that they decided at, at the, the minute before the the election, and historically uh, they decide for the. Uh, candidate that is in, in the first uh, on the polls. They're first on the polls, so uh, we will see what, what happened on, on uh, November 15th. The other uh, election that took place on, on Sunday that was also important was the new assembly. Uh, it's important to say that, that uh, the actual president uh, closed the assembly uh, with a constitutional uh, uh, act, and um, in, right now the results uh, of, of the assembly election are, are, very, are very interesting also because nobody, especially the Revolución Ciudadana, that is the Correa's, the former president, uh, Rafael Correa's party, uh, don't have simple majority. Uh, they had before in the in the uh, former or, or the uh, the last assembly. Right now they don't have a. Uh, they have 52 seats out of 137 seats. Uh, the majority will will be 70 seats. So they have to ally. They have to negotiate and they have to talk with other parties. And uh, also, the, the the composition of the of the assembly. It's interesting because uh, the uh, the party of the um, candidate that was killed uh, during the campaign they had 31 seats, so they are the second most powerful uh, uh, party in, in the assembly, and they are the natural oppos opposition to the Revolución Ciudadana, and the other. Uh, important party that, that always in, in, in politics always happens in, in, in Ecuador is that Partido Social Cristiano, that is the uh, center-right uh, uh, party, they had 17 uh, seats. So they will be very important how they negotiate or how they allied with Revolución Ciudadana, that they were allied before in the, in the last assembly. But right now, uh, there are some voices that says that they are not going to ally uh, 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 with, with an alliance during this uh, this uh, uh, assembly. Uh, and the last, uh, also important thing to state is that uh, Pachacutic, uh, Pachacutic is the indigenous uh, political uh, side uh, of the, the the political side of the of the indigenous groups, and. On the last assembly, they had 27 uh, uh, seats, and right now they have four. That is because they don't, they didn't present for a, a, a presidential candidate, or they didn't present uh, national uh, candidates for the assembly, just local, and they had only four seats. That's also important because it, it, we have to see uh, those four seats how how they are how they impact. And a positive or negative uh, on the on the candidates and inside the the, uh, the assembly. Um, with with this composition of the assembly, is important. I, I think that is uh, good to see that that it will be uh, a good assembly for mining. Uh, there is a, a lot of uh, some uh, law projects that has to be discussed during this this assembly. And, and um, I think it, it will be a good moment to discuss uh, those, those projects. Uh, and, and also we, we will see how the, the things align aligns on, on, on that uh, project. And the third thing that, that the people were consulted in, in the last elections was a, a popular consultation on two things. One, uh, about the Yasuni. Uh, the Yasuni, it's, an, uh, it's, an, it's not a project, it's an oil well that is already in production. 
Uh, it produced around uh, one to one billion dollars in sales each year. And um, the people was consulted if they wanted to keep the oil uh, under underground. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, it's not surprised, but but the result was uh, uh, 58, almost 59 percent of the population vote that they wanted to keep the oil uh, underground uh, versus a 41 percent that said no. But the, the most in interesting thing is that the local uh, voters, the, the, the communities that, that are inside the uh, influence area of, of this uh, oil well, voted uh, that 40, uh, 80, 80, 58% voted that they want to keep the exploitation of this well. So the government right now is thinking uh, or is saying that, that it, the local voters prevailed over the general uh, consultation. Uh, also, it, it will, we have to see how this develops uh, in, in the future, in the following weeks. And the other um, popular consultation was uh, that uh, about mining in the Chocó Andino. Chocó Andino is a very um, a biodiverse area in the northern part of Quito. It's a, it's a, a forest uh, with a lot of, of, uh, 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 of uh, people and, and, and there is not a lot of concessions there, like 12 concessions already granted. In, in, in that area, and the 68% uh, of, of uh, the, the voters of the communities um, said that uh, they want to ban uh, mining in, in that area. So it was a, a majority, and the good thing, the, uh, and the most important thing right now is that according to our um, constitution, the uh, all this uh, popular consultation, it's only for the future. So the, the uh, mining uh, concessions that are already granted, uh, they, they will uh, keep uh, their concessions and, and they are uh, able to, to make exploration and exploitation when it comes the time. So it's not retroactive, it's not, uh, it's not for the past. And, and it's, it's not only uh, said by our constitution, but also our constitutional court, there is a decision from our constitutional court that says that all the results of a popular consultation is for the future and not, and not for the past. So this is, this is the three elections that we had the last, uh, last Sunday. Thank you, Alvaro. I think overall, uh, as Adventists, we're, we're pleased with the outcomes uh, on Sunday. We are open and, and willing uh, to work with either presidential candidate, uh, and we think the the future is uh, is bright in the next term for for mining. The biggest surprise to us was as a result as a result of the unfortunate event with uh, presidential candidate Villa Vincentio uh, getting assassinated about a week before the election. The topic of security was front and center. Uh, in the elections, and that did change ultimately uh, the outcome between parties, uh, call it two to five. Uh, it was unexpected for Daniel to be second, but as Alvaro said, uh, he did very well in the debate that occurred uh, earlier in the week. The other surprise was the overall uh, poor performance of the Pachacuti uh, party. Uh, in comparison to uh, under under President Lasso. So uh, the second and final vote here for president uh, will be on October the 15th, and a new president will be sworn in on the end of November, early December. Uh, briefly on project updates. Uh, so in the last month, we continue through uh, completion of detailed engineering. Uh, we expect to be 100% complete by October, uh, detail engineering on 
anything silver related, so waste rock, tailings, uh, and infrastructure, so roads, uh, camp, et cetera, and also mine plan. I, uh, I don't know another project that uh, has had 100% complete detail engineering prior to construction. That's normally where you see the cost overrun. So that continues. Uh, we do expect some uh, permit and contract and uh, completions over the next few months that we hope to uh, be able to, to announce. Uh, we're gonna get next to the constitutional court outcome, um, but we did talk a month ago about the strategic process that we're running to source the last capital in. Uh, while uh, there was a lot of headlines and perceived negative headlines out of Ecuador, uh, our interested uh, parties continue to do their work and have formed a, a positive, a medium to long-term view of the country and uh, that strategic process uh, continues with a potential outcome over the next uh, few months. I'm gonna pass it over to Scott here now to talk about uh, our announcement earlier in August about the RIT, uh, the surprising announcement to all of us and what it means uh, for Adventus. Thanks, Christian, good morning. Um, so you'll remember that we uh, successfully completed the first phase of the environmental consultation, which is the information phase, um, which consists of uh, two weeks of uh, public information centers, workshops, uh, assemblies in the communities of direct area of Im impact of the project and uh, some in the indirect area. Uh, that was successfully completed on uh, the 23rd of July. And um, the Constitutional Court uh, emitted a writ on the 31st of January that um, uh, they took up the issue of uh, in constitution, unconstitutionality of the 754 degree decree that uh, uh, regulates the, uh, this environmental consultation process. Um, and also accepted the uh, request for uh, suspension of, uh, of those activities. Um, and so um, that process is currently uh, working its way through the legal process. Um, so the uh, presidency submitted uh, within the time frame established uh, uh, in the law, they submitted a, a clarification um, to the Constitutional Court um, and requested that the suspension be, uh, be lifted. Um, and the, uh, the presidency is also working on um, the, uh, uh, their arguments uh, that the decree that they signed is indeed constitutional and they will present those arguments uh, this week. Um, so the court will uh, review those uh, review those arguments and continue on with the process. Um, I think if there's uh, a silver lining for us here, um, this uh, 754 or the the, the decree uh, for the constitutional uh, sorry the um, uh, the environmental consultation. Uh, applies to all environmental licenses in Ecuador, both in the public and private sector. So the suspension of um, this process has uh, stopped 176 projects um, that need an environmental license. It's about $2 billion of investment, and that includes um, obviously some mining projects, um, but also several hospitals, roads, water treatment plants, uh, power projects. Um, so the silver lining here is that um, there is uh, mounting political pressure to resolve this issue as, as quickly as possible because it obviously um, is having a big impact on uh, investment and uh, development of needed projects in Ecuador. Uh, so what does that mean? The, the Constitutional Court, um, uh, we expect within the next uh, three weeks, uh, uh, will respond to the clarification sent by the president. Um, and they do have the possibility of declaring this as a uh, priority process. Um, and if they do that, that could uh, lead to 
uh, a solution in this uh, uh, in this issue fairly quickly. So, uh, if they were to take the route um, to declare it a priority process, we could be looking at a uh, two to three month uh, resolution. Um, and even if they don't, given the current uh, climate and the pressure, um, we expect that this is, um, you know, that it's reasonable to think that there's a solution to this problem within the next six months. Thank you, Scott. So this is a evolving uh, issue that is being addressed at the highest levels of government. And as Scott says, uh, this writ has somewhat paralyzed the economy of, of Ecuador. Uh, and so uh, this is a, a high priority for the government as well as a high priority for the two presidential candidates uh, as well. Uh, just to summarize you know, the investment thesis uh, for Ventus and uh, the events over the last month and, and how that impacts the, the thesis. Uh, we've got the highest grade undeveloped copper project uh, globally. We made a conscious decision about uh, one and a half years ago to complete detail engineering, hire the construction team uh, in parallel with permitting. And the intent is to be able to start construction as soon as possible. Uh, and to be in production in 2025 when we expect the copper price to be hitting new all-time highs. We are near the finish line. We're 95% of the way there uh, on our final permitting, uh, nearly complete on the engineering, and we're very close to uh, bringing in the, the final capital to, to build our project. Uh, so, while frustrating, uh, what occurred early in August with the Constitutional Court, uh, once this is resolved, we think it's a, a quick path to uh, receipt of the ESIA and uh, the start of construction. Uh, we are encouraged with the outcome of the uh, elections here. We think it is going to be a, a pro-mining a backdrop here over the next few years while we're in construction of our project uh, and the new government will be supporting us as the current government has uh, to date. Uh, completely understand that investors look at this probably from a binary perspective. Either they're going to get their permits and this is going to get constructed or not. Uh, I think that is more than priced into the stock price here. Uh, I would say the market is discounting us uh, for a delay of two to three years to construction based on where we're trading at 0 0.15 to 0.2 times our, our net asset value. So as, as you heard from Scott, we're talking about months potential delay here. We're not talking about years. And as mentioned, the strategic interest continues to be there uh, regardless of the, the negative backdrop of, of this month. So I think it's a lot better than perhaps people perceive uh, uh, based on the news um, of the last month. I'll uh, end it there and pass it over to Kyle and Kyle will moderate uh, the Q&A. Thank you guys for the thorough discussion. I uh, just see rather a comment in the Q&A. So just as a reminder, if you need any clarification on any of the points discussed, feel free to ask the questions in the chat. We did have a couple pre-submitted questions though, so I will address those first. And uh, the first question was, has the, how has the response been from the community to the suspension of the environmental consultation? I'll leave that to anyone to answer. Yeah, over to you, Scott. Yeah, so um, we had a very uh, strong uh, participation in the information phase of the environmental consultation. We had um, uh, over 1,200 visits to our information centers. Um, we had uh, shops in uh, five communities of the area of uh, direct area of influence of the project. 
and four assemblies that were completed with really robust uh, participation, lots of good dialogue, uh, as is natural, lots of questions. Um, and uh, uh, that, that format really gave us the opportunity to be able to engage directly with the community and spend uh, quite a bit of time going through details on the design, on the environmental impacts, the environmental management plan, the mitigations, compensation. Um, and so it was a very positive project. And I think there was a lot of um, uh, momentum uh, in the community uh, after that process, looking forward to uh, the final stage, which is the, uh, the consultation uh, phase. And so um, we have, uh, since the uh, Constitutional Court suspended the process, um, there has been uh, quite a bit expression of expression of support from local community members. Um, last week, we had a, a group of people from the local community um, uh, a group that was organized by the, uh, the Chamber of Commerce that uh, visited the public defender, uh, the provincial public defender to uh, express their, their concern over the suspension. Uh, and requested uh, that the public defender uh, help them to get an audience with the national public defender and with the constitutional court so that their voice could be heard. They uh, feel like um, uh, the voices that are uh, screaming the loudest uh, do not represent them, and uh, they are um, uh, eager to uh, tell their side of the story. So uh, we continue to see a um, uh, strong support in the local community for uh, for this process and for the project. Thank you, Scott. We have another submitted question here. Do you expect mining to be top of priority for the next government? Uh, maybe Alvaro can take that one. It's hard to say if, if it will be a top priority, but it. Uh, I think we think that that it will be a priority. Uh, we are not going to to hear about mining in this campaign period, but when when the government, any government, uh, whichever it, it is, uh, will support mining, uh, it, it is it is important for our uh, uh, for our economy. It is important for the uh, community's uh, economy. So um, I think absolutely positive that that any government will support mining and support especially projects that will enter in production uh, this year or, or, or the sooner the better. Um, I don't know, Scott, if you want to add something, but, but uh, I think that uh, we, we will see good signs uh, on any uh, government. Yeah, I guess, thanks, Alvaro. I guess I would just add, you know, mining is, uh, has already become an important part of the Ecuadorian economy um, with, with the two uh, industrial mines in the Zamora Chinchipe province uh, being the largest ones in the country. Uh, mineral exports from Ecuador last year were $2.8 billion. And obviously there's a, a very strong pipeline of projects um, that, can, that could uh, increase the uh, participation of, of mining in Ecuador's economy. Um, and as Alvaro said, this next government will be 18 months before elections, um, but they will be looking to uh, implement programs, implement uh, uh, development programs, and obviously um, to do uh, that kind of development work, you need uh, you need income, you need resources. Uh, and so I think uh, mining will be uh, one of the areas that will be uh, of interest to them. And as Alvaro said, especially uh, projects like uh, El Domo and a few other projects in the country that are uh, really ready to start construction. So um, uh, I think it's reasonable to expect that uh, uh, that mining will be uh, something that will uh, will be in the um, in the eyes of, of the next president. Great, great, thank you. And I do see uh, Pierre did want some further clarification on the ESIA. Is there still two to three months once Constitutional Court makes a decision? 
he follows up with, what if it's not a favorable decision? Take us through the milestones to construction. Okay, we'll take a stab at that first and pass it on to, to Scott. Uh, so Scott says the Constitutional Court may take a view that this is uh, uh, this constitution, constitution, constitutionality question is of a national interest and uh, an expedited trial uh, might might happen, which could lead to a resolution within the next two to three months. Uh, and typically, these processes take a year. But again, due to the fact that this decree affects all industries, any project that requires an ESIA, there's billions of dollars of investment that is on hold as a result. We think that this will be a quicker resolution than a year. Our base case is six months. Uh, so call it two and a half to six months is you know, what, what we are thinking to have a resolution. Um, the documentation is ready to go for the second and, and, and final stage of our, of our process. Uh, and once that meeting happen, happens, then it's approximately a month to uh, complete the ESI permit from an administrative uh, perspective. It is a non-binding process. Uh, in the first phase, uh, there were no material concerns raised uh, around the project. And so, uh, the question is if there's is there going to be an unfavorable decision that's always possible um that's not at all what we're thinking at this point uh so a month after the constitutional court uh declares this decree is constitutional we think we can complete the esia and then immediately move to uh to construction scott Yeah, I guess I, I would just add, um, I, I uh, uh, agree with uh, with what you're saying, Christian. And as far as what the outcome will be from the Constitutional Court, um, so the president uh, uh, wrote and signed this 754 decree based on a ruling from the Constitutional, a previous ruling from the Constitutional Court uh, uh, ordering him to do so, to uh, make the modifications to the environmental regulation to include uh, consult consultation to be in compliance with, with the Constitution. So while the Constitutional Court has a, uh, uh, there's a number of um, different um, uh, options or, or, or different outcomes uh, from the review of this by the Constitutional Court, um, it is unlikely that they would uh, uh, go completely against a previous ruling that is the the basis for this uh, for this um, for this decree. Um, so we think it's they have they have tools at their disposal. For example, to uh, call it uh, conditionally constitutional, so that it applies under uh, certain circumstances. Um, they also have the ability to. Uh, uh, make modifications to the decree on the specific points where they 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 feel that it uh, potentially is not constitutional, um, or after their review they could say it is constitutional. So uh, again, given the uh, political pressure uh, to resolve this issue, uh, so that all these 176 projects can continue on with this process, uh, we feel that it is. Uh, uh, likely that they would resolve this in a, a manner uh, that would um, not cause extended further delays in, in the process. I think they'll, they'll be looking to implement a solution uh, that gets, uh, if there's issues with unconstitutionality, that it solves those issues and gets these projects back on, on course. Great. Thank you, Scott. And then Pierre just had a follow-up question about if you could discuss your strategic options. Sure, there's only so much I can say on, on that front, uh, but the interest has been strong uh, to provide the final capital uh, that we need to, to build a mine. Uh, the interest has ranged from uh, investment at the asset level to full-blown M&A and, uh, and everything in between. Uh, 
I think the interest level to date, uh, despite the poor market conditions for junior miners, uh, is a testament of the high quality nature and the uniqueness of the opportunity. And our focus here is uh, completing a transaction that is the least dilutive to our equity uh, shareholders. Thank you, Christian, and thank you, gentlemen, for addressing the market about any concerns they may have. You had a thorough conversation today, so I appreciate it. The audience appreciates it. Uh, thank all the attendees for joining this live event. The recording will be available on 6.com in the coming days if you did come in later. You could also find more information about Adventus Mining at adventusmining.com. But I hand it over to you, Christian, for any final thoughts to close this off. Uh, thank you for everyone attending uh, this call and, and, and showing the continued interest in, in Adventus and what's going on in, in Ecuador. Uh, I, I think uh, with the announcement at the beginning of August, that was potentially our low point uh, as, as Adventus uh, as, as we know it. Uh, I think there's a lot of positivity from uh, all sorts of angles that is forming here. and. Uh, we should see this project in construction here over the next uh, few months. So we're very excited for that. And, uh, and we think there's a real opportunity for investors to make uh, considerable money on the story. Perfect. Thank you gentlemen for your time. Appreciate it.